Hey guys, David Fine here from Keys Moths. Guys, we're making a big deposit into uh, the Florida State Collection of Arthropods and McGuire Center up in Gainesville, the University of Florida. Guys, we've been doing research on the moths of the Florida Keys now for over 20 years, and I'm starting to deposit the specimens there. I've photographed them. We've done all kinds of work on them. You can see all the work we've done on our website. It's uh, keysmoths.com. Please go check out my website. And you can see all 630 plus species of moths that we found in Monroe County, Florida over the last 20 years. It's a lot. It's a lot of bugs, dude. So, guys, we've done three boxes so far and we're going, getting through eight. This is box number four. So after this, we'll be halfway done with this year's uh, deposit to the collection. And this is going to be a fairly quick one because there's not a whole lot of different species in here. But there's some really really fun and cool species in here. Uh, guys, these are, we'll start up here with the coolest ones. These are Olypius, or I'm sorry, Aelopos tantalus. This is a day-flying sphinx moth that lives in South Florida, and they are really freaking cool. In fact, almost all these are. This one right here, is special and I'll show you why in a second. Um, so yeah, so these are tantalus. They have this white band that they, they fly during the day. They actually go to flowers. You can see them visiting flowers. They are a pretty cool little moth and I absolutely love them. They are, they are really cool. Um, they feed on seven year apple and I think what's the other, uh, cross a petalum, I think it is. And, you know, every once in a while, you can, you'll see them zipping around on, on flowers or by their host plant laying eggs if it's a female. All right, now, uh, I've got a whole video on those. Or do I? Yeah, I do. I do. Now, this one right here, guys, this is a special moth. Oh, it's not labeled. Oh, I took the label. I, I have to make a new label for that. Okay, guys, this one right here. The one that's crooked there is a different species. That is Aelopos titan. Looks very similar to Tantalus, but the forewing, you can see the difference up on the forewing there. It's got that band of spots and then like a secondary band right there. Uh, the titan or Tantalus only has a couple little spots and they're not really in that uniform band. But this is a much rarer species in the Keys. I've only ever seen two of them in the Florida Keys in over 20 years. This one we see pretty regular. Tantalus you see regularly. Um, Titan, not so much. So uh, I got to make a new label for this this one here. I forgot I took the label off, but um, yeah, guys, those are cool moths. And uh, there's, I think, four species of Aelopos in the United States. These are the two we get in Florida. Um, they kind of fly like hummingbirds and you can see them at flowers and stuff and they are pretty cool. Now here's two specimens of a very common moth called the morning sphinx. And the morning sphinx, it's um, Enyo lugubris. They call it morning sphinx because of its drab brown coloration as if somebody was in mourning over the loss of a loved one. Now they are dimorphic. Most sphinx moths are not dimorphic. These ones are. The female is up here on top, and they've got a massive, thick abdomen there. You can see that. And the males have a more thinner abdomen, and they have this little tuft at the bottom, which the female does not have. Uh, and you can see there's a slight, slight variation there in the wing pattern and shape. Uh, the female has that dot that's pronounced on the forewing there and that stripe. And the, the male stripe is... A little bit darker, and the dot is, is darker as well. But the wing shape is actually just a little bit different. Um, it's very subtle differences, but they are different. Now, one cool thing, if I can show you, turn them sideways. The, uh, this species has a, a crest on its thorax, and that crest is actually scales. So the scales actually make this little horn on the thorax. And if you were to touch it, they would just smash because they're, they're just scales. But it's pretty cool. Male and female both have that. Uh, just a cool little 
thing about the morning sphinx. Now, the rest of these are not sphinx moths. They are different species of notodontids. So, these ones here are Nastia utilanta, I think they're called. Let me make sure I get you the right name. Yeah. Nastia utilanta. These guys here are uh, poison wood feeders. I've actually found a caterpillar down the Florida Keys, and they're extremely common on the, in the coastal areas of the Florida Keys. They feed on poison wood as a larval host plant. Uh, they, they're probably one of the most common moths in, in the, throughout the duration of our trip or our project. They just keep coming and coming. So um, then there's another notodontid. Okay, let me get the, the name tag out. This one is called Nastylia indiana. I remembered that. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, this one's a little bit more widespread and common. Like they, they these guys here feed on uh, only uh, poison wood. And so they are uh, South Florida only. But these Indiana, uh, I'm not sure what their larval host plant is, but they live uh, a lot of other places. Now, these guys here are Heterocampa cubana. And it's probably the rarest um, the rarest one of our notodontids in the Keys. And they also feed, I'm actually, I'm not sure what they feed on. We've tried to raise them several times, but we get eggs, but the caterpillars just don't seem to eat anything that we try to offer it. So it's a little discouraging. I was hoping to find out what the host plant is for them. Um, over here we have, okay, th okay. These are the males of Heterocampa cubana. These are the females. The females are much larger. Let me see if I can back off and I can show you that. Females are much larger and they have this really cool patterning on their forewings, which is pretty sweet. Um, they, are, they are beautiful, fairly common, but again, the, the, just not regulars. Now these ones here, this is Heterocampa zayasi. They are also only in South Florida but they are extremely abundant and they come in several different color forms. They come in like this kind of drab brown color form is the, is the most common. But then they have these which have like these kind of grayish streaks in the forewing, which are pretty cool. And do I have any of the other color forms? No, I don't. Okay, finally, um, this is actually a more common moth, I believe. And it's a little bit more widespread. It is called da, 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 da. Oh yeah, Refrigia bicorda. And there's some guys that are a lot better at remembering all the names than I am, but um I try to remember all as many of them as I can, but I just can't get to all of them. Um, but we, we find these every now and then, but they're not regular, um, a little bit more, a bit more rare. So that's about all the time we have on this video, guys. Hope you like it. Uh, these are, these are some pretty amazing, amazing moths. Uh, definitely the moth of this box is for sure Aelopus Titan. And that's, and it's cousin Aelopus Tantalus. Those are some pretty cool bugs. Hope you liked the video. Um, like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to comment. If you have any comments on any of these bugs, uh, please drop a comment. It helps, our, helps us out in the algorithm, and we appreciate it. So, uh, guys, thanks so much for watching. These are getting donated this week. Until next time, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care now.